Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about the absolutely massive Easter egg that is in Call of Duty Warzone right now. This is one of the biggest Call of Duty Easter eggs I've ever seen, and I have made significant progress on it. Today I'm going to be showing you all of the things you can interact with, like the phone here in the airport, and we're also going to be talking about how they interact with each other, the locations of everything, some of the Easter eggs and clues that I've found, and generally all of the progress that I've made towards solving this Easter egg, which in my opinion is quite significant. Here's another computer that you can play with. There's laptops, there's bunkers, there's switches, there's stuff all over this map. So let's kick off today's video with the locations of everything. First off, we have Bunker 00. There are 12 total bunkers, but for whatever reason, they go from 00 up to 11. And this one is way on the edge of the map, south of the statue out by Promenade West. It's a little bit difficult to find. I almost missed it at first, because you have to go to what appears to be out of bounds and creep around down here on the rocks. But once you get down here, you will find bunker number zero zero. All of these bunkers are barred to the best of my knowledge right now we can't enter them and they all have keypads which you can press F or X or whatever to interact with. Bunker number zero one is north of the go-kart racing track in a very small little unmarked area. You'll have to drive through the woods a little bit to get there but thankfully this one sticks out really far and is very very easy to find and clearly labeled. I'm going to go ahead and show you the inside of this bunker. We're not going to look at the inside of too many of the other bunkers because they are extremely identical. Most of them just have a keypad that you can use to enter information, a little bit of loot, and some symbology around the doors that doesn't appear to be that significant. Bunkers number two and three are just barely north of this location in an area that stands out very, very obviously on the map. It almost looks like a like a turret or a truss or like an old medieval fortress, but these two are side by side, which kind of led me to think that maybe we could hit the buttons at the same time and do something. There's graffiti on the outside of that one, and uh, there's blood on the door, which I found to be interesting, but I'm not sure it's significant. The other one's a little bit harder to find. You have to go inside the gigantic like World War II looking pillbox and then jump down in a little hole. And at the bottom of the hole is where you will find the next bunker location. Bunker number four is located just barely southeast of the dam next to a really big Russian sign that's somewhat hard to miss. However, the bunker itself is actually a little bit difficult to find because instead of being next to the big sign or in an easily accessible location, you have to climb through the mountains and parkour a little bit. I edited out the part that I got sniped, but just above the sign you will find bunker number four, and of course you have the ability to enter the keypad again. I thought maybe this one would have been special since it's next to a military location and a dam, but no. Bunker number five is just barely, barely west of the plane crash right there, marked it on the map, very easy to find, right? This one is one of the easiest ones to access because you can literally just drive right up to it. No hunting, nothing. It's, it's, it's there on the map and very plainly visible. Unfortunately, like all the other bunkers, there doesn't appear to be anything unique or special about it. But as you can tell, we're hitting the switches as we go, which we'll move into that one later. Bunker number six is on the very far east side of the map between quarry and lumber. Very out of the way, very easy to miss. And as a matter of fact, when we got there, we thought, oh my god, is this bunker different? Is this one actually some train tracks, but you can't go into the train tracks. Instead, this bunker is, like the others, hidden, a little bit elevated, a little bit out of the way, so you have to go climb up the mountains a little bit, go around this, parkour over that. You can't take a very direct path unless, I guess, you just redeploy and parachute in, but just above the train tracks, you will find bunker number six. Bunkers number seven and eight are by far the easiest to find. They're in a very hot zone in the map, almost in the middle of the map, just to the east of broadcast. They stick out. People come here to resupply, redeploy. There's a buy station all the time. Number seven this time is going to be the one that's underground in the little hole. It's not particularly distinct or interesting in here, but there is number seven. Number eight is just behind you on the other side. You have to go down steps again. All of all, well, they're underground, I guess. It'd be really cool if these bunkers connected together or opened up or something. I think it'd be really neat to drive like a go-kart or ATV through here and just kind of fight with people. There is a symbol on the wall that we'll be talking about momentarily. And bunker number nine is way on the other side of the map on the southeast side of prison. It's not in the prison. You have to actually jump off the mountain, come down here, try not to die. Uh, Delta here, unfortunately, bit the dust on this one, and I almost did. I almost died from the car. This one's kind of hidden underneath the mountain. There's no real loot down here. It's not... 
You know, it's not like stealth, but there's not really a reason for anybody to be down here. So almost nobody will be here when you come check it out. And bunker number 10 is on the very south side of the map, south of these weird statues. Again, you'll notice that a lot of these bunkers are close to weird statues or seemingly unusual points on the map. One of the things I took a look at here, if I might even use it for the thumbnail, is the Russian coat of arms symbol, which again, we'll be talking about very, very shortly. Bunker number 10, a lot like the others, you just go underground, you hit the switch, and there's really not much going else. And finally, bunker number 11 is just across the street from bunker number 4. We actually hit this one out of order the first time, and this one is unique. It's not hidden at all, it's very easy to access. You see that there's like uh, electrical equipment, generators, and work stuff out front, so it seems like people are working on it for some reason. However, what makes this one unique is that you cannot hit the switch for this bunker. If you walk up to it, there's no press F to enter code, there's no interaction button, there's no nothing, and it doesn't matter if you've already hit all the other switches. This Easter egg would be difficult enough if it were just secret bunkers, but we also have laptops, phones, and computers, which are admittedly very similar to laptops, hidden all over the map. You'll find your first computer in the southeast corner, I want to say it is, of the hospital on the very first floor. I thought it'd be higher up, but it's just a regular plain Jane computer that you can interact with to enter a passcode. The next computer is in the prison section of the prison, or like the actual gulag part of the prison underneath the prison that we talked about in the previous Previous episode. It's got a nice triple monitor set up. Somebody's clearly a streamer here, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Computer number three is very, very easy to find because it's in vacant. This is a location that we're all familiar with with port. Port's very easy to find. And if you want to find it, all you need to do is go to this corner on the edge, kind of like the one you would use to push into the back in regular multiplayer maps, or I should say the shipping container area, and you'll find a little computer here that you can interact with. We looked all around the computer for clues, for numbers, for what keys are missing or not on the keyboard, but to the best of our ability to tell, all of the stuff around it is generic. The next computer is slightly more difficult to find because it's on the second floor of Atlas Superstore in one of the overlook windows that kind of looks into the main building, and I find Atlas to be extremely hot in Battle Royale and also extremely busy, but if you do get in here, you can creep around, not get shot, and find a nice little laptop that you can interact with. We tried very hard to find a difference between the laptops and desktops, but honestly, we just kind of couldn't. The next laptop is in the radar control tower and in the military base. I thought it would be at the very tippy top of the tower, but it's actually in the basement of said tower right next to the ammo stack, and again, I don't really know what it does. Last up today, let's talk about phones, because there are a lot of phones that you can interact with on this map. The first one, and I think is in one of the more fun locations, is in the air traffic control tower at the very, very tippy top. So you're probably going to need to fly out here so you don't get shot walking across the tarmac. Then you're going to need to use the zipline elevator thing to scoot on up to the very, very top. Like, thankfully, it's not on the roof because that would be very difficult to access. But once you do go up the stairs on the side that faces the rest of the blown up airport, you will find a telephone that you can interact with. Now, the way these telephone works, uh, telephones work is that you press F to use the phone, you make a call, but unfortunately, all you get is a busy signal on any phone, and we've not been able to call each other or make them do anything that special so far. If you come into the very back of what would be old, uh, I want to say, scrapyard in the boneyard, you'll find a phone next to a broken computer that you can use. I don't know if the broken computer is significant to anything, but it was different than everything else that we saw, though all the computers in that area are broken. The next phone, surprisingly, isn't in like a really cool location, but rather just in a regular old fire station near the north side of the map. Uh, I have the map linked down below if you guys want it, but it's just right there and it doesn't do anything. Again, we thought maybe this building would have been more significant because this building had a lot of numbers and a lot of plaques and we tried shooting various things and interacting with things and tried little cryptograms and math solving, couldn't find anything useful. Phone number 45 is in broadcast, which was very difficult to find. It's out here in the middle of all of the cubicles in the death floor, so good luck getting to that one live in a match. The last, or next to last phone, I should say, is in between Promenade East and West in this very small little kind of shopping center. It was very, very difficult to find because there were so many buildings and so much going on, and it all looked very, very much so the same. But if you come and go to the building that I marked, which I couldn't even tell you what it is or how it's different than any of the other buildings, but you'll go in here and head to the very, very back corner, and in the back corner you will again find a phone. I don't know why I'm staring at a wall. I'm just brilliant today, 
There's the phone. We made it to top 10 by doing almost nothing. Last but not least, there is a phone in a very nondescript little shack outside of the train station. This one is extremely, extremely easy to overlook and miss. I almost didn't even know it was here, and I never would have thought that this was an important building. And those are the locations of all of the secrets that we know of so far. One of the few clues that we do have is that the panels say S-IB networks on them, and they're extremely similar to this very old school panel that was used to control spaceships and the Apollo Soyuz test project back in 1975. So this is a whole bunch of old space technology. The symbol on the doors is just simply the Russian coat of arms. Unfortunately, it's nothing crazy or fancy or rare. This is just the symbol that the current Russian Federation uses. So this is just saying, hey, it's Russian. One interesting thing though a subscriber put me on is that there are all these hidden messages about redacted and classified stuff in the online TAC map that most people didn't notice. I'm putting that person's Twitter handle on the screen right now and I'd appreciate it if all of you would follow and say thank you as well because he and a friend dug all of this out but you can find all of this information about redacted on the Call of Duty Warzone tactical map. So the way this works is let's say for instance I chose number three and then from number three, we went to the cart racing and the weird statue. And there's a drop down menu. And in the drop down menu, sometimes you'll find areas that say classified. And you click on them, and there's no information, and it's all redacted compared to, say, Farmstead, which is you can just see exactly what's going on here, and it gives you a description. These don't. And what he did is extracted all of these and made a nice little text file so that we can read. Some of these are really weird, honestly. It almost seems like a little horror ARG. Whoa, wrong tab. Okay, we're gonna go back to here. And unfortunately, that's all the clues that we have to work with today. Last but not least today, I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that we tried to do to unlock this Easter egg, but failed with. We tried hitting three of the bunker switches at the same time, including ones that are nearby and side by side, and got no luck with that. We tried hitting all 12 bunkers in one match, and hitting all 12 in a match, or in order, or really in any order, didn't seem to make any difference. We tried making calls at the same time, we tried using computers at the same time, we tried using a computer or phone near a bunker to get a code to put in and we tried a lot of random orders for phone computer bunker combos just hitting switches all over and didn't really have any luck with it we also decided to shoot a lot of stuff i think we probably went all over this map shooting everything that could conceivably be a switch or an interactable or an object and we tried to scavenge every building for meaningful numbers or codes or clues and to be honest with you, we came up pretty bunk so far. We found a lot of the pieces of this puzzle, but so far we don't have the slightest clue of how it all fits together. And I'm hoping that as a community we can solve this because I bet it's going to be a really, really big Easter egg. Well, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.